Good evening. I hope you are now online. I will just wait until the time is exactly 22.30. And uh, there it is. Um, so please welcome everybody. My name is uh, Eivind Gullberg Jensen. I'm a Norwegian orchestral conductor and I'm so happy to be hosting Guy Braunstein tonight directly from Check the Gate. And uh, Guy Braunstein is actually an old friend of mine. He is a violin soloist who I've been uh, accompanying a number of times. He is a former concertmaster of uh, the Berlin Philharmonic. And the latest few years, he's also been a very successful conductor. He's arranging music, he's composing music, he's a very beloved chamber musician, so he's literally a very busy guy. So let's now check the connection to see if we have Guy Braunstein joining us. Guy, good evening. Welcome to Check the Gate. I'm so happy you can join us directly from Berlin. How is life in Berlin at the time being? Great, great to see your handsome face, Amy. Um, <laughs> in Berlin, it's so much fun to be quarantined here. <laughs> I can imagine. You and see, I'm growing up. You are. Yeah, this is my quarantine beer build. So. Um, yeah. You are trying to hide the fact that you are you are you, you won the first prize in the Jim Carrey lookalike competition. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Of conductors. laughs> so funny, funny guy. As I uh, talking about your um, one of the first times uh, I I met you, you told me that uh, Isaac Perlman always due to an incident when he was a very young student where he had to memorize a book of one thousand jokes, I think. He, always when he was meeting people for the first time, he told a joke. And for me, it's actually you a little bit the same because every time I introduce you to someone, you're also telling a joke. So, so, so Guy, before we start, can you just tell us a little joke? You can forget about that. You can forget about that. No, no, uh, no, no place for jokes. I mean, uh, uh, but you know when you go... Uh, between festivals and you meet people, you always come with a load, a big load of, of new jokes. And and um, uh, and whenever uh, whenever I tell you a joke, I start remembering uh, uh, where I heard it, in which festival, or or from which uh, friend, or which sometimes great musician. And and this joke will never be connected to to, to a certain person. So I see. It. We will come up with some of them, I'm sure, later on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, one thing I want to like to, to start to, uh, to talk to you about, uh, guys, because uh, when, when we first met, uh, um, you were, of course, already busy for many years as, uh, as a uh, soloist, violin soloist with orchestras, and you were also holding a position uh, at the Berlin Philharmonic as a concertmaster. And now the last few years, you're more and more active as a very successful orchestra conductor. And since that's my profession, I'm very curious to hear what is the most important things you, you, you feel that you bring with you from your, from, the, from, from your experiences in this other parts of our profession when you're going to, to an orchestra on the podium? It's quite simple. I've been to the other side. And uh, now, now, if I'm going to come up with a, with a method or, or a way of delivering uh, an information or, or how I wish people to make music, having been to the other side, I know actually what works. I know what a conductor does that used to make me play better mm. and make uh, more beautiful music. And uh, even more important, sometimes I know... Um, what doesn't help, what doesn't work. So, I mean, um, now when I conduct, when I show or, or when I work with, with the orchestras, um, I have a better idea of, of what the outcome might be. Mm, yeah. Into the other side. Mm. It's just a... Yeah. Mm. Sorry. No, this is... Um, uh, sometimes, you know, when you cross, when you cross uh, the street and, and go to the other side, uh, yeah. you, don't, you don't necessarily forget everything from, from your previous uh, place or, or previous uh, 
um, function and and I find it great deal of help mm. um, but, I just but, don't, oh, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, no, uh, uh, talking about crossing uh, uh, the border to the other side I remember first time I met you was actually when I was um, was uh, attending uh, some kind of course for conductors in Berlin called Das Kritisches Orchester, which was unique in that way that it was not led by uh, um, an orchestra professor, but the only musician who volunteered and played in the, in, the, in the orchestra was giving feedback to the, to, the, um, to, to, to the conductors, which I thought was an amazing experience because not only was you there, but the, many other musicians from the Berlin field, from all the best uh, orchestras in the, in, in the, in the city. Um, um, but I also remember you as a very, uh, very constructive, good eye for the conductors and also very, very brutal, honest uh, concert master and with some of our um, <laughs> young students. And I just wonder, after now con crossing the border, going to the other side and conducting, uh, have your view on younger conductors mellowed a little bit or would you, if you took a step back <laughs> and joined the Das Kritisches Orchester again, would you be softer on them or what how do you think your 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 view on conductors would be if you if you went back to that position well you know i think i think the only thing that matters is the bottom line what brings the better outcome yeah uh, of, course, of course every conductor or or student conductor or a student violinist is, is uh his own personality or her own personality And each one needs to be treated differently and spoken to very differently uh, in order to get the, the, the better result. Uh, and that was a great idea. I mean, I've done it for a few years, um, this workshop for, for, yep. for our viewers that do, do not understand the German term. It's the critical orchestra. Which means, uh, as opposed to any other orchestra versus conductor experience, this time the conductor will be the students. Yep. The orchestra uh, musicians will be the professionals working with the conductor, as opposed to the normal way of the conductor working with the orchestra. Yep. Um, and I just, I just uh, remember um, that you see the different, different. Um, Uh, different people coming with different uh, ideas of how to work and I had to be sometimes brutally honest with them mm. to tell them uh, this is a good thing and here you're full of shit yeah, yeah. and, um, and uh, yeah, I think in the long run uh, only in, or in, in order to help them mm. by the way by the way uh, you yourself uh, was was the the one of my only experiences in that uh in that workshop that the first thing when you started conducting us i remember brass first first symphony yeah yeah and and, and there were many many before you and when you started and and then you went from the uh, slow introduction to the to the allegro And I thought I came. The first, the first word that came through my mind was "fuck." I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and I said, "What do I do now? What do I say now?" And um, and I, I felt like 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 I made my my uh, twin brother musically. And uh, and I remember. Sorry if I embarrass you. Now everybody is going to see you blushing. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing I had to say is, uh, my dear friend, you are in the wrong building. You should go to to two kilometers away to to the Philharmonic Hall and conduct the Berlin Philharmonic, <laughs> uh, and 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 not the school made orchestra in in the school. And and uh, I'm very happy. A few years, not too many years later, it materialized. But this yeah, is, this is actually where exactly the time in this workshop where we met. That's true. And, and, yep. I, had, uh, and I had this, uh, this first F word. Of course, a few hours later, I invited you to come home and you broke my sofa. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How is your sofa doing? I'm still there. With... <laughs> I have to buy you a new one soon. Or maybe actually people will be missing this sofa if you suddenly got a new one, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we love it just the way that you left it. <laughs> 
But uh, well, thanks for your, your compliment. I also remember this as a very, very nice experience in terms of working with, uh, for the first time with musicians at, at this level, I, I remember. And, and, but uh, uh, the whole concept of the course was, as you said, to give young conductors uh, feedback. And of course, when you go into a master class, not everybody becomes a conductor. Someone is doing it just to try, and someone becomes a professional conductor, so on, becomes even a very good professional conductor. But let's see, I mean, from all the young conductors you've seen in these courses, and even as a uh, soloist or, or, or concert master, what is the most uh, uh, common um, mistake we all do? I mean, is it, is it possible to generalize, to say something where you would say, oh, another young conductor, he's a talent, but why can't he, and you know? Uh, yeah, the most common mistake is to come with a, with a game plan and to follow it religiously. Uh, yeah. uh, that's, that's the most common mistake and a big mistake for a conductor. Um, of course, you have to come up with a, um, with the very beginning of the process, but then you have to react. Mm. You cannot plan in, uh, uh, plan in advance to say, orchestra, you are too fast. Uh, they might be slower than what you imagined. You always have to react. Yeah. Um, and you always have to, to first of all, hear uh, where you are, where is point A, and then, and then during the process, find your way how to bring the orchestra from point A to point B, uh, which is the the probably closest thing closest thing to to be as ready as you can uh, and to have the, the the ideal preparation and of course then comes the moment itself of the concert where where um, everything is different yeah mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but I, I think the most common mistake is is, is following a, a, a pre-made game plan. Yeah, you have to listen and adopt that. And that's, yeah. that's actually very, and even to, to uh, as a young conductor, to, to even conduct and listen at the same time is something it takes years to achieve, really. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, and you have, to, you have to stay modest. Even yeah. if you're a maestro, sometimes you can learn from the second oboe. Exactly. What? Stay, modest, stay modest, just make sure that you, you bring the ensemble uh, uh, to the point where they make the music that you want to hear. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, um, how much of, of, of this profession is experience and how much is talent? And uh, uh, because um, today and also actually for, uh, I think for many years, we've seen uh, young conductors uh, pop up and, uh, and getting really important uh, uh, music director posts already in the 20s, which is fantastic. Um, but as from the, I mean, how is this, um, uh, what can, uh, how much of this is talent or, and how much is this, it's like buying a young wine and hoping it will mature, <laughs> like uh, the orchestra is buying a potential which they hope will, will, will um, develop during the process of the cooperation, you think? Look, uh, I have mixed feelings about this thing. Uh, in, a way, in a way, it's true also for instrumentalists, for a young violinist or a young pianist, uh, that they throw you in the cold water sometimes way before you are ready for it. Uh, and especially for a conductor that, that theoretically needs to know about a certain piece of music more than every single musician of the orchestra that stands in front of. Mm. And they, and they some, sometimes they know a lot, they have played it a hundred times. Um, on the other hand, um, I mean, you have to be challenged also. You have to be challenged also. Uh, you, there, you cannot possibly wait and wait until you, you learn and you know everything until you get your first experience. M many of the things you learn by experience and by making mistakes and, 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 and realizing the mistakes you have made and, 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 and figuring out you have to make it better next time. Um, but... I do think I do think uh, no, it's a it's a it's a trend, it's a trend, and uh, that the conductors are becoming younger and younger, and uh, the the media loves it, the managers love it. Mm. Um, I think 
I think, um, um, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I know there are exceptions. I'm, I'm not only sure, I know that there are exceptions. But uh, mostly um, conductors are being sent to the to, to work without, when they're not ready. Um, to, conduct, to conduct Beethoven symphonies um, and, and they just didn't collect enough experiences. Uh, they don't know enough about the surrounding of the symphony that they're doing. The chamber music that Beethoven wrote at the same time, uh, his experiences, personal experiences during the time that he wrote it, they're just being sent because they look good and they're very exciting. Yeah, yeah. But they're not ready for it. Mm. And unfortunately, usually these careers will start early and end early, or at least yeah. diminish early. So um, I, I'm I'm a little bit ambivalent. I'm mm. a little bit ambivalent. Look, uh, going from young conductors to uh, more established conductors. I mean, I remember once uh, of our many. Uh, beautiful corporations. Uh, I think it was in Hanover when we did Brahms the Violin Concerto together. And I had the feeling that, uh, and I think we even talked about this. I think I know I have the right answer to it. That your interpretation was slightly inspired by Isaac Stern. Is that cor is it? Am I uh, correct to assume so? Mm, um, maybe you caught me. You know, I try. Yeah. I always say, and I try really to 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 believe, not to try to imitate other other uh, violinists uh, mm -hmm. and and the only thing i would try to imitate is the human voice maybe singers yeah yeah uh but of course you know i've worked a million times with isaac stern as a little boy already yeah and a little bit more and more uh in my late teens and my early 20s mm. And and Brahms was one of the pieces that I uh, that I worked quite a lot with him. Um, maybe not because, but 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 besides, um, his recording with Ormandy is one of the best of all time for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, he worked my ass off with this concerto. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I would never try to imitate him or any other violinist for that matter. But uh, I'm sure the, a lot of the influence is still there. Mm. I, I, can, I can, until today, play a phrase. You know, yeah. be somewhere on the stage in America or in Scandinavia. And I would come to the second theme of the, of the first movement of the concerto and just really visualize Isaac Stern playing it for me or just telling me um, how to uh, construct this phrase. Mm. So, I mean, it's an influence that is, uh, that, is, uh, that is there, whether I like it or not. <laughs> but talking about all this influence, guy, before we are soon, we soon have to round up, um, uh, is there anyone you are conscious about influencing you also as a conductor? I mean, uh, obviously, you will be influenced as a conductor by such term uh, uh, and other violinists and uh, you've, been, you've been playing with, but you also have lot, worked a lot uh, with many great conductors. That's right. Would you name anyone, or or is it uh, like, or is it, yeah? Well, again, I would never try to imitate anyone. Uh, not a living uh, conductor or or violinist, and and not even a dead one. Mm. Um, having said that, uh, of course, I can cherry pick uh, phrases that I thought, wow. Claudio Abado did it more beautiful, more beautifully than anybody else. Or Daniel Barnwell is, is more musically convincing than other other ones doing this phrase. Mm. But I, I won't imitate. I will try to analyze. Okay, I like it, but why do I like it? What did they yep. do? How did they do it? Yep. And then try to go through the process and not try to imitate the result. Yeah, yeah. And the one thing I really appreciate with uh, making music with you, Guy, is that this very weird combination of you always being such a funny guy. Uh, but I, I think that kind of also shows your, um, the way your, your musical instinct works, because uh, I think that is, uh, it, it's a kind of a shyness which you are using to hide your sincerity and, and, and uh, what, what, how deep and serious musician you are. That's, it took me many years to understand. I was... I was thinking, how come this this guy who always throws his joke is such an amazing 
uh, wine list and uh, and uh, how can I always te- learn so much from you and uh, and on, at the, on the other minute you would come from with some really stupid jokes and I think this combination makes really <laughs> really makes defines you as a, as a person guy and uh, and uh, you are all this shyness also makes you want me to play something where, where you play and you're very busy um uh, arranger and composer and can you tell me you know what i would want to play and even though it would be bad sound here for my cell phone but you can tell us very quickly what i'm going to play from now okay uh, if if you ma- if we manage to work it out the, the technicality of it yeah it's got the famous aria nessun dorma from turandot of puccini yes Uh, which is one of uh, six or seven of them that I made and, and all recorded for, for an XCD, but we can talk about it later. Okay. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> I think in these days where opera houses have to shut down, they can just hire you and play this opera. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, now we're all shut down. In this yeah. Uh, look, um, as I told you, you know, I, I have this weakness. Um, I, I love uh, human voice singing. Uh, yeah. Beautiful music. And that's my only source of, of uh, the only source that I try to imitate when I play violin. And a few times I accompanied as a conductor, uh, uh, singer, soloist, you know, singing opera or opera parts or sometimes uh, just songs. And I, I become so jealous. I become so jealous. But I, 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 uh, if, if I sing, all the neighbors would, would sell their houses and run away. <laughs> So therefore, I have to take out the violin yeah. and and try and 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 of course, have to adjust the part and make it more violinistic at double stops at some arpeggios whatever but but I do it constantly all the time i um uh, I did it with Tchaikovsky music for for my last c d uh record uh, um, c d that I recorded with the BBC Symphony Orchestra yeah. Uh, With Tchaikovsky's uh, music of uh, Jean Onegi in the opera and... And, and, and Rosalka you've done too. Uh, Rosalka I've done too, but that's not recorded yet. Maybe okay. Not yet. Yeah. Maybe record uh, that in Bergen next time you come to Bergen to play. You, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, of course, I've taken, except the Turandot, I've taken arias from uh, uh, Tosca, from uh, La Boheme, from a, a Thais of uh, Jules Massenet. Um, I've taken songs of Fauré. And yeah. Of, yeah, on Rachmaninoff. And uh, adopted all of them for violin. Mm. Violin and piano. Yeah. Uh, and it's, um, it's, it's going to be coming on the next CD whenever it's ready. It still is in the, in, in the studio, in, in, in the works. Yeah. Um, But a lot of a lot of material that that is adopted from from singing mm. uh, and plus of course a lot of uh, uh, show virtuoso pieces for violins or 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 the genre exactly in between them that that uh, is written originally for violin and makes you want to sing them uh, 
the 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 problem is you know the 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 producers and the technicians will finish the the technical work but i cannot find the bloody name for the cd <laughs> okay it's let's a make CD, a competition CD, violin violin and piano violin and piano uh, with a lot of repertory uh, that mostly uh, is originally for voice or at least has to be sung and i'm trying mm-hmm. to imitate singing in most of the time i thought of of um uh i want to sing for you or or let me sing for you or let's but, sing uh, but but you know if you even if you or, even the only the suggestion violin singing is one that she uh, is ex- I, suggesting I, I, don't, i don't know if if anybody watching us can 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 save me and 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 help me and come up with a good and and just just type and send us a a a cool idea i'm i'm helpless yeah yes, i just cannot find a, a bloody name consider it done yeah huh? <laughs> yeah yeah sure sure put it down <laughs> it was so great to uh, to uh, to uh, this was my first uh, time as a host on the check the check the gate and i was very happy that it uh, was uh, with you guy as uh, our special guest and uh we have a lot of things to talk about so let's talk soon uh, uh, offline as well privately so and big big uh, kiss to your whole family and everybody down there and uh, let's uh, yeah. let's catch up soon and uh, let's let the beard grow and the quarantine take over yeah. exactly we shave and and, and drinks on me yeah <laughs> ciao gay ciao, ciao. guys yeah. bye bye